Yeah, my name is Bob Reese. I'm from Cherry Hill, New Jersey. I started RCA not as out of college. I started at Bendix Aviation out of college, and I lasted there four months. It was such a boring job that uh, it was hard to take, and the draft was on. And you, if you quit a draft for a job, you got uh, drafted into the Army. And I met a guy on the bus going out, and I said, how do you like your job? He said, this is garbage. And I said, what can we do? He said, well, you can join the, we can join the Navy, go to OCS, and it's three years. So you lose an extra year, but you're an officer, you're getting more pay. And so that's what we did. We uh, went down, we were in New York, we went downtown New York, signed up for the uh, Navy up in uh, Newport. And uh, we went up there, and it was four or so months. And then uh, after graduation, they sent me out to... Uh, Treasure Island in California for six months of electronic study, which I learned more there than I did in college. Uh, it was uh, five days a week, eight hours a day, no duties, so we had the weekends off and we uh, bought a car and we used to travel around California and uh, all the uh, parks, the national parks and everything, so it was great. And then I had to serve three years in the Navy, and I got out in I, 48, I guess, for 53, 50, mm, 58, I guess, and I uh, started RCA. I came in, and I think I interviewed with Bob Pewitt. I think he was there, Sam, huh, Pewitt, and uh, he was very good, and he hired me, and uh, that's where I started and uh, I was there till GE came in and GE bought up RCA and they said I was near retirement I was within a year of retiring and they said we'll give you a year's pay and uh, you could take your lump sum and leave and uh, I, that's what I did I, I, it was great cool. I took the lump sum and the one year's pay and left and uh, it okay, was, so you was started a good at RCA deal. around 58? Yeah. Okay, what was your first project? Oh, boy. I, I Probably just a little amplifiers, and then, uh, then I got into uh, multipliers started, and I was able to uh, get a job uh, with a, in ATL, because the, I said before that the the fellow I was working for, we built the radio this big, and then we we're going to make a small box radio. And he called the meeting of we had seven engineers sitting around, and he said, "What color are we going to make the knobs?" And I said, "I, I can't, I can't work for this guy. It's going to be disaster." So I was able to go up to uh, Advanced Technology for Max Malchow, and uh, Max went out to somewhere in the West and came back and knew all about multiplies, which. For rectum multipliers, which was a brand new thing at the time. And he taught us, he gave us the formulas. You look at the diode, you look at the capacitor, the voltage breakdown, and you, you could tell how much power it would handle. You could tell the efficiency by the Q of the diode. You could tell everything <coughs> that was going to come out. And he, in the lab, <coughs> excuse me, we spent a couple months in the lab just building uh, units, not for production, just for test purposes. So we built them and you measured them and you could tell that his formulas were correct. The efficiency came out, the power came out, everything was working. So when I got a, then I got a call back to go back to my old group and uh, a good engineer, George Nishimura, was working on a multiplier and he was working on it for about 15, 15, 20 days, and he wasn't getting anywhere. He was using voltage pump, which Max said, you don't use voltage pump, you gotta do current. Instead of putting the diode this way, you put it this way. So uh, the, the group leader says, how long would it take you to make a breadboard? And I said, about three hours. So he says, go ahead. Because we, that's what we were doing for months, we were just doing the same stuff. So I did, and that's, 
that started the uh, multiplier uh, game that worked out. And uh, then I was the multiplier man for a couple of years. Uh, it was very interesting. Did you have mentors? Did you have people looking after you when you first started here? Um, yeah, I'm sure there were. Uh, I think the group leader, I think Bob Pewitt was very good. He was uh, uh, very hands-on, very uh, instructional. So uh, I think he, the group leader usually provided the, the efforts, yeah. So what project do you remember the best? Well, I think the, uh, the I, I worked on the Tyros. The first thing was a, a, uh, the Tyro satellite, we, we put on a, a beacon transmitter that just, they could locate where it was. And then we went on to the one man in space, which I think was Mercury. We made the communications or the PA for him. And then the two men was Gemini. And then the space station, I think, was the most interesting. Because uh, going to the moon and... Uh, all this business was very interesting. So uh, that was, I would say, the most interesting job. Okay, what did you do on the uh, lunar projects? Well, the lunar was to be the, uh, uh, well, it was all trans the transmitter. Mm -hmm. When the, uh, I said when the man walked on the moon and said one small step, we, we made the PA and it was in the back of his helmet. And in the beginning, they were worried that the radiation might affect his brain and whatnot, but somehow they got over that. And uh, the PA was right behind his, his left ear, I believe. So he said one small step for mankind and et cetera. And uh, it was very exciting and interesting at the time. Did you have any association when Apollo 13 happened? Um, no, just just the news. Uh, that was it. No, I had nothing, uh, nothing more than that. So, as far as your work at RCA, how do you feel the company uh, saw your work? I think. Um, I think I was treated very well. I, I think they they were pr very fair, and uh, um, I really had no complaints about uh, RCA uh, when when GE came in. Uh, uh, well, they gave us the offer to leave, which was. Uh, Terrific! I was near. I was ready. All my kids were. I had six kids, and they're all. They were all through schools, so I was ready to take it easy. And they gave us an offer, as I said, of the one year's pay, and your lump sum you could take, and uh, it was a great deal. <laughs> so I, I took it, and no no regrets. What about your colleagues? Working with your colleagues. Um, enjoyed it for the most part. There were a few, uh, there was one fellow who, Sam didn't mention his name, and I won't either, but we used to watch him. He would leave at four o'clock, go to the bar across the street, and we'd look at the window and, <laughs> and watch him. And finally, he, uh, he was an electrical engineer. He got out to, they hired him out to Moorestown, and we were happy at that because he was really uh, just a, a drag. And uh, he used to go uh, at lunchtime, he'd sit at his desk, he'd put a kind of a cone-shaped thing over his head and go to sleep and hope nobody would wake him till five. But uh, he got out to Moorestown and he, he left secret documents on a bar and that kind of triggered his, <laughs> the end of his career. They, they uh, filed notice against them and they let him go. But um, but that was one. What that was one. No, um, very, very good. I, I think they were, uh, it was a good group. We had uh, interesting times. And uh, not so much outside, I don't think outside, but at work uh, pretty much. 
and they did have, uh, well, they had ski groups, and, you know, they had other little exercises going on, but uh, it was... It was pretty nice, pretty nice. So what was the best thing about working for RCA? Well, what I liked was the 40 hours and not, not much overtime. Some, there were some groups that they did want all this overtime, and uh, I didn't like overtime. I didn't like coming in Saturdays for four hours. And, well, you could work eight if you wanted, but... I really like to keep it, I like to keep it to the 40 hours straight. Um, so that was the, um, my, and they were, they were pushy. If, if you didn't want to work overtime, you, they let you off a little easier. What was the worst thing about working for RCA? Uh, I can't think of a negative, like Bendix Aviation. I could come up with a few of them when I started Bendix Aviation. But RCA was pretty good. They were flexible. If you, if you wanted to go to a, a different group, you, you, could, you could, you know, and I was able to do that. And um, I had no complaints about RCA. I think it was great, great company. What about the RCA's influence on South Jersey? I don't know. I, I, there were a lot of people. There was certainly a lot of people working in Camden and then Moorestown and whatnot. But uh, I think that was it, just providing uh, pay and the benefits for the people. I don't, think they, I don't think they went out of their way to influence South Jersey. They just wanted a place to build equipment and uh, get engineers and other people there. So I, I don't think there was... Uh, in your neighborhood, were there other people working for RCA? Uh, yes. Uh, I used to drive in with Sam. He was uh, probably half a while, mile away from me, and uh, I was the driver, but I had a, a diesel rabbit. We used to go with the diesel rabbit, and I'd pick him up, and we'd go into Camden. And Because he had... Uh, Sam always had... Uh, Lincoln's. He liked them big cars, <laughs> but the uh, economy was in the <laughs> the diesel rabbit. So um, he got good mileage and not much problems with it. So you didn't spend much time with your coworkers outside of work. Uh, I would say not. No. Because, by, you know, when we uh, got married and uh, we had six kids and that keeps you pretty busy uh, without getting into t too much other. With, uh, with reference to the RCA family, what's that mean to you? Well, to me it was just the, the, the group you work with, basically. That, that was it. They... Uh, uh, the family was just the, the fellas or the, the group that you were mainly with. I, that's, to me, that's what it was. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So how would you sum up your experience? I, um, I enjoyed it. I, uh, the, the work was very interesting. The pay was good. The hours were good. Uh, Vacation time. I, got, I ended up with four weeks at the towards the end of my career. Four weeks was a good vacation time, and you were you were able to take it. They didn't they didn't nitpick when you you know uh, half a day here, half a day there. They let you take the time off, so it was good, wonderful. How did your kids view your job at RCA? I think. <laughs> I think they enjoyed that it was secure. I think they enjoyed that my wife kept them busy and uh, fed and, and all that business. And, you know, we're able to relax and have a good time. And we swim pool and all that business. So I think they were happy. They still speak to us. <laughs>
So would you sum this up by saying, well, this was just a job, or was this a good journey, or how was I think it was a very good job. It was interesting. Uh, that first job I had was boring at Bendix AV, and that was boring, and that's a tough, that's a tough way to go through uh, a week with a boring job. This was always interesting, interesting work, and uh, good people, so it was great. Did you notice a change in environment with the GE takeover? Yes, I, I think the GE came in, and the, the first thing they wanted to do was uh, get rid of people. They, they came in and they, they had their own engineering group doing similar work. So they bought, I think they bought, G, uh, bought RCA just to get the television part of RCA. They didn't need the engineering part because they had it. So their big thing, as soon as they came in, they wanted to shrink the engineering department, and, uh, which turned out to be an opportunity because they, if you wanted to leave, they would give you a year's pay. And um, if you were in the right position, you could go right into retirement. So, and I was in that position, so it was, it was terrific. <laughs> it worked out great. Right. Anything you want to add to uh, the story? Uh, no, I, uh, the work was always interesting. And, that, and that's the main thing, you're going in there for, 40 hours or so, and you want an interesting job, and it was, uh, the work was interesting, and you could, if you wanted to switch positions, or if you didn't like what you were doing there, if it got boring, you could go down, and you had to see the manager and the chief engineer, but you could go somewhere else, and um, that was a good opportunity. Just one small step for a man. Mm -hmm. You made that radio. Yeah, I made the PA. the PA. Yes. How did you feel when he when he was doing? Well, that? I think we were. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we wanted to make sure it worked. He had he had uh, I think backups. He had I think two backups beside the main one. So uh, we we were kind of confident. The the first thing though uh, with NASA, I maybe I told you they. They uh, were so crazy in the beginning, they wanted to make sure all the parts were high reliable. They wanted to look at the sand before they made the transistors. They, they wanted to know everything. And we couldn't get anything out the door because they had so many tests, none of the parts would last through the test. You, you had all these tests and we couldn't get any parts to use because they, everything failed. So finally NASA said, uh, Forget that, give us your best shot. And then we were able to uh, make a radio. I mean, the parts were reliable, but if you put enough uh, sanctions on them, or enough tests, you can break anything. So uh, once they relaxed and we had like a couple backups, they didn't have just one radio, they had backups. So everything worked out uh, fine. I, we didn't have, I don't believe we had any, it might have had one failure, but not was nothing, uh, nothing big. Okay, very good. It was an interesting time. <laughs> good. All right, Bob. Well, I appreciate you taking I'll, your time out for this. This is important to get all of the story mm -hmm. down. Yeah, it was a good, a good company and uh, very interesting people too. We met some very interesting people. Yeah. And I told you about Max Malchow. <laughs> that's that's you told, my. You told him. Tell yeah. me. Well, I uh, when I, the guy wanted me to. Uh, we're going to build a small box, and uh, he wanted to know what color we're going to make the knobs. I got out, and they put me up with Max. And Max was, he looked like a farmer, but he was the smartest guy I've ever met. There, he taught us the multipliers, correct the multipliers, and I told you he gave us the. The formulas, mm -hmm. how much power can handle, how, what the efficiency would be, everything. So then when I got back and, and built that first multiplier that went into production, it was, it was great. And uh, it just, he gave you all the knowledge you needed. And that was uh, a wonderful thing. But he was a good man. <laughs>